I have a question for you. Do you have a warm and safe place to sleep tonight? Do you have a comfortable bed waiting for you at home? Me too. Let me ask you another question. Having a warm and safe place to sleep tonight in the comfortable bed that awaits you, is that enough to make you happy? I'm Evdokia Dimitriou. I'm an architect, and I'm on a mission to build houses for the homeless. I may never be rich by doing this, but it fills my heart. Finding people who share the same vision of making this world a better place fills me with abundant joy. We were raised to memorize information, get good marks, and as good as it gets end of the year report, a good college degree that will ensure a decent job with a good salary. Somehow, we are certain that the result of this predictable path will bring us happiness and success. On my junior year at the university, I got a part-time job at a restaurant to help my family with my many, many expenses. Architecture is a very demanding course, and juggling both classes and a part-time job left me most of the time sleepless and full of stress. I reached the point that no matter how many hours I slept, I did not seem to get any rest. It goes without saying that there was no time for a personal life. I was barely going out. I never made it to the gym. And things that I loved were postponed for later. My motto was get through the day. I focused on my studies, and my motivation was to become a star architect or to work for one, to get a good job with a good salary, and somehow I was certain that that would ensure me a happy life. I allowed absolutely nothing to distract me. I shut myself in, myself in a bubble and ignored everything that was going on around the world, even in the lives of friends and family. I barely knew there was a war happening in Syria. I survived my junior and senior years. I graduated, and I was waiting for happiness to happen. I was an architect ready to face success. But all that showed up was a world that was more demanding to the professional me than the student me a society that was in a rush to get somewhere. And finally, I came face to face with myself, something I never had time to do before. During that period, many things were going on, and it felt like my life was collapsing. I was broken, lost, confused, and frustrated. I lost my motivation. And being a star architect, having a hit career, making lots of money, it wasn't inspiring anymore. It wasn't enough to keep me going. I found myself lost, not knowing what I was fighting for, and kept asking, what am I living for? Desperate to get out of this mood, I moved to Athens for a year through the Erasmus Plus program to work at an architectural studio. In Athens, I was faced with the ugly reality of poverty and the countless number of homeless locals and immigrants. Nothing prepared me for it. I had a hard time understanding what it means to be homeless. What does it mean not having a place to go to, a bed to sleep in, having no one to take you in, a friend, a relative, a colleague, a neighbor, how is it possible for someone to be sleeping on the streets, in the night, in the cold, alone, hungry, with no one to talk to. I found the thought frightening, the thought of loneliness, the fear of the danger. I just couldn't wrap my head around it. The other thing I couldn't understand about this whole situation was why society was not bothered to solve the problem. So I started blaming society and the government. I was blaming passers-by who were ignoring the homeless. 
winter was on its way and there were so many people on the streets that were about to freeze. I had so much anger in me and day by day, my anger was growing stronger, not only for the homeless, but for the war, the refugees, the poverty, the society. Why is no one doing anything about it? Until one day I realized that I'm also part of society. I'm also a passerby who did nothing. At that moment, I realized that all the anger I had was not towards society. I was angry at myself. I was angry because for all these years, I chose to not care and be ignorant about what was going on around the world and only care about myself, my future, and my success. I realized that if the government is not doing something, if society is not doing something, if others are not doing something, then maybe I should do something. That was the beginning of my awakening. I embraced my new vision, and I started looking for ways to provide shelter for the homeless. Thankfully, being an architect came in handy, and I started putting my knowledge to work. The idea was to find a way to build temporary shelters that have no cost, are easily assembled, and easily moved. In my free time, I was researching, thinking, designing, and trying out different ideas, a task that took months. The final result was a circular shelter made out of stuck plastic bottles that were woven with strips of plastic bags. Working on the prototype, I realized that the result wasn't only putting a temporary roof over a homeless person's head, but it was reusing plastic bottles and bags, which is a way to relieve the environment from all the waste that is filling the oceans and is polluting the earth. At that point in time, very randomly, I met people from South Africa who took interest in my project and wanted to be part of it. Not being alone in this made the project seem more real and more possible. They invited me to Johannesburg to work on the prototype of my structure, hoping to replicate it and give it to the homeless there. The aim was to teach the homeless how to source their own materials, store them, and build their own movable living structure. In order to do so, we had to finalize the shelter, but also understand the bottling system. We visited a few communities in the area and tried to collect as much information as possible in order for our project to successfully solve their housing issues. One of the communities was placed in Innisfree Park, in the very wealthy area of Santon. I would never have imagined that at the far end of this beautiful green park, there was a community struggling every day for their survival. Living in fear that any day now, the police will force them to move and live again on the streets. Recycling was the way they managed to get their lives together and build temporary shacks for them and their families. They were working around the clock, seven days a week, collecting recycled things in order to have enough income. This is the result of years of hard work. We met people in this community that couldn't collect enough money to provide for the basics and were sleeping under the trees in made-up tents. Seeing and experiencing in such proximity this raw and painful reality hidden in the heart of a wealthy area was heartbreaking. I kept putting myself into their shoes, thinking how it would feel living under these circumstances. I felt this flame inside me, an empowerment. I not only wanted to go and help, I wanted to tell to the rest of the world what my eyes have seen, what my soul has felt, and try to make them understand that this is wrong. 
there are enough resources for every human being to have a decent standard of living, a roof at least over their head. I wanted to make people see, but with the eyes of the soul, which most of us have forgotten how to use. I felt it is my duty to spread the word and inform the rest, the rest of the world. That is when the idea of workshops with kids popped up as a way to bring awareness to the ones that will lead the future of the planet. We organized the workshop at the local school. I firstly explained to them what I was doing, why I was doing it, and how important it is for us to help other people and the environment. The children were inspired, asking a million questions to feed their endless curiosity. I showed them the technique, and they successfully managed to complete a shelter that was then donated to a homeless family. The original shelter I was working on was also donated to the community in Industry Park. I don't believe it's a finished design. There are still many things to take into consideration, such as heavy rain, transportation, heat. But it's a starting point, and I'm very curious to see how each individual will adjust it based on their needs. It doesn't take a lot to be happy. Africa has taught me that too. Sometime before my trip to South Africa, I participated in a workshop in Ghana. We were a group of 40 volunteers who took on the mandate to build a classroom in the northern village, Sang. We traveled there from Agra by bus for 14 hours, which meant we slept through the night. It was very early in the morning when I woke up to this spectacular view. Small clouds of fog rising above the fields. Fields that were stretching so far, they were disappearing in the horizon. Small mud huts blending with the earth and the endless greenery. Women with the traditional colorful clothes, balancing on their heads baskets of goods they picked up that morning from the fields to take to the market. Children in their school uniform, walking the way to school, laughing and playing. Goats and chickens everywhere, running free and living among the villagers. It was so simple but yet so real, so authentic. The experience was unforgettable. It amazed me how little they had and how happy they were. Look, look how happy they were. We were working every day with the villagers. We were eating the food and we were allowed to become part of the culture and traditions. There were children with us at the site, helping as much as they could, being there from the morning until late afternoon without having eaten anything. Most of them were barefoot and yet so full of life. I have never, in my 25 years of life, felt so alive and so sure about how I was spending my time. I wouldn't mind doing it for the rest of my life. The difference between the people in the village of Sang and the homeless in Athens, South Africa, and all over the world is that the villagers are at peace with their situation of poverty, and they have learned to appreciate whatever it is they have. They know their food might not be enough and that drinking water is not guaranteed but they have friends and family, people to share their lives with. Being homeless doesn't only take away basic needs, but also safety and companionship. It was difficult to realize that us citizens are partially responsible for these social issues, and that ignorance in 2018 
is a choice. And it was difficult to realize that I am, and we are, also responsible to solve them. Break free from whatever is holding you back, and don't be scared to wear your heart on your sleeve. Being compassionate is not a weakness. It's a strength beyond any power. Dare to step into other people's shoes. Dare to take initiative and change situations you don't like. Treat people the way you would like to be treated and open your heart to every single living being. Albert Einstein said, the world is a dangerous place to live, not because of the people who are evil, but because of the people who don't do anything about it. I started this movement alone, but I'm not alone anymore. At first, it was my friends from South Africa, others followed. We are now creating a new initiative. Our vision is to practice our professions by making sure it brings solutions to social problems and helps vulnerable people become self-sustained in a process that empowers society to take action. You never know. We might even change the world. I may have not stopped the war in Syria or ended poverty. But so far, I helped build a classroom in Ghana showed an impoverished community in South Africa how to build shelters at zero cost, and I'm dreaming to do so much more. And that makes me happy. Thank you.